Hi everybody. I thought I would share my 12 string collection with you today and let you uh, see the guitars that I, I play on. Uh, over the years I've had lots of different 12 strings and uh, I have a current stable of about five of them now. Uh, they all do different things. They all do diff different things differently and better than one or the other. And uh, I use them as tools for different things. I've, had a, I've got one here I'll show you that's a beautiful guitar that kind of died on me and is really not very playable anymore. But uh, it was a beautiful instrument, kind of an experiment. Some of my guitars are just flat out experiments of things I've tried. I'll start out with my uh, Cozart Electric 12. <laughs> sound in 12 string <clears throat> I got it on eBay for like $66 plus whatever the shipping was to get it here uh, this is uh, you'll see these on eBay and they you'll go like well gee that's, that's pretty uh, they're interesting looking but they're uh, not very expensive so you wonder what's the, the trick with them uh, they I've always thought they were like put together from a kit but uh, Whatever, this is a nice little 12 string. It sounds great, it plays great, and for the money you can't beat it. I don't tour and don't play out much anymore. I just do lessons and and do home recording in my studio here. And uh, you can see it's got like uh, an alder back and sides. It's got some kind of like a, a veneer for the top that looks like it's, I think it's Coco Bolo or something like that. Maybe, I don't think it's Bubinga, this is probably Coco Bolo. Uh, Rosa fingerboard, maple neck. Uh, it's a nice little guitar. Uh, some people have had intonation problems with them, but uh, uh, I was just learned how to do the intonation on them and was able to get it where it plays pretty well. So I've used it for a number of different songs. Hang on a second, I'm gonna set this one aside. Show you a couple of others. Okay, this one, this big mahooka here, this thing weighs a ton. Uh, it's an, uh, I had an idea for an arch top 12 string once upon a time. I love arch top guitars and I figured I wonder what a 12 string would sound like as an arch top. Well, this one is made by a guy named Bruce Wei. Uh, it was built in uh, China or Vietnam, Vietnam maybe. Uh, I contacted the guy through eBay and anyway he custom made this for me. The inlay in this is just spectacular. As you can see it's all this three dimensional stuff on the back. This is uh, that's probably koa wood on the back and sides here. Uh, inlays in the neck, inlay in the headstock. It's just one gorgeous instrument. Uh, it, the, uh, the top of it is a uh, spruce. Had an inlay down here. I got some of the inlays are missing. This thing actually fell off the wall one time and I lost some of the abalone in here. Uh, this guitar though, uh, I moved to Oklahoma about eight years ago and the climate here in Oklahoma just killed this guitar. I tried humidifying it and everything else, but basically the arch in the top kind of collapsed. Uh, so I use it for an open D. tension and it's it buzzes a bit and the next kind of like this on it uh, there's really no way of really repairing it but I use it every now and again I'll pull it out for a for a song for recording uh, but it kind of stays hanging up on the wall most of the time and uh, but it's it was a beautiful guitar and kind of an experiment as a uh, as an arch top and a 12 string that's a bit much too much string tension uh, so I, I think that if you had a an arch top that could support that string tension, it probably wouldn't sound very good just because of the, uh, the amount of bracing it would take. Uh, so maybe as an electric it would be fine. Uh, this is a Rogue 12 string. These are made by, you know, for Musician's Friend. Uh, my son got this for me. I think they sold for about, what, 159 169 something like that. I mean, it's something that he could afford. And uh, it's ended up being a really nice little guitar. It's got like maple, uh, not maple, but a mahogany back and sides. Uh, no real fancy stuff in it. Uh, it does have, if you look closely, I'll see if it'll focus in here, a uh, herringbone binding around the top and around the sound hole. That's something that some of the, the Martins had back in the day. And that's actually a pretty, uh, pretty little uh, design on it. Uh, anyway, this thing sounds real thunky because of the mahogany. But it, I, I use this for my open G guitar. It's tuned down about a half step. And
great sound. This thing records and it sounds huge. Uh, you'll find that with mahogany guitars, uh, microphones really like them and they, they record really well, a lot better than maple and rosewood. So it depends on the guitar, but this one, it's a great little instrument. Let's see. Okay, this one is kind of a no-name guitar. I had the idea a few years back uh, that I, I said like, well, there's kind of a hole in the market for 12 strings. There's either really super expensive ones that are like two grand and up, or there are really cheap ones that are around, you know, 299 at the top end of them. And there's this big hole in the middle. There's, there's no mid-range 12 strings hardly. And I said, well, there's maybe a hole in the market that I could design something and plug it into. So this is one I talked to an OEM manufacturer over in China and we emailed back and forth and came up with some ideas on things. And uh, this guitar is, uh, has some of the features that I always wanted to have in a 12 string. And uh, it, was, it was kind of an experiment and it, it worked out pretty good. Uh, this guitar, uh, it's got kind of a Taylor looking kind of bridge on it, but it's, it's not really a Taylor clone. Uh, has a Bubinga back and sides, which is a beautiful wood. Uh, you can't import rosewood into the United States anymore, so that's a problem if you're going to get an imported guitar made. And so the, uh, the Bubinga is often called African rosewood, and it has a lot of the same tonal characteristics, and as you can see, it's a really pretty wood. And the top on this guitar is not Sitka spruce like many. This is Alpine spruce. Uh, Alpine spruce, I think, makes a, a, a superior 12 string. Uh, I didn't particularly care for a pit guard. I just wanted to go with would look without a pit guard. And then there is some uh, abalone around the the uh, the sound hole. And then there are some real pretty abalone inlays in the neck, as you can see. Uh, the neck on this thing is uh, pretty chunky because I wanted it uh, nice and wide. So it's a two inch wide neck. And the neck's a little bit thick too, but I kind of like that to kind of hang on to it a little bit. The, uh, the binding on the body, instead of celluloid, and it's kind of hard to see here probably, but it's maple. So all the way around, back and sides, there is, there is some celluloid in there, but on the outside edge of it, it is uh, maple, just natural colored maple. Really, really nice looking. It's, it gives the guitar kind of a, a, a nice natural kind of feel to it. Uh, one of the oddball things on this guitar that I really wanted to have for years, never could find one that would have, I wanted an extended headstock so this could have full-size tuning machines. This doesn't have the little minis like you have on every other 12-string made. Uh, this has full-size Grovers on it and, there, and the, the, the headstock is oh, probably another inch and a half, two inches longer, inch and three quarters longer than you'd have on a regular uh, 12 string guitar. I actually had to have a special case made for it because a regular 12 string case would not fit it. It's that, that tall. Anyway, this is my standard tune in guitar. <laughs> frequencies for days. You can feel this thing just thumping up against your chest as you're playing like the low G, low E. It just really resonates. It has a, a nice beautiful sound. I don't know if it'll come across on the microphone or not. And, and it stays in tune at standard tuning. Uh, and I have this strung up with, uh, with uh, extra light silken steels. So it has just a fantastic tone, super easy to play, super comfortable to play. So this one appears in my, my lesson videos sometimes whenever I want to have something that's going to be in standard tuning. So that's my standard tuning 12. And uh, my number one, my primary 12 string is my Alvarez. This is in model AJ60. These were made and started in around 94, maybe 95. And they made them up until the early 2000s or so. I don't think they make them anymore. They have another one that's similar to it that has replaced it, like the AJ80, I think, is was the replacement model. Uh, this is just one super guitar. Uh, maple back and sides. I love the sound of a maple 12 string. It really makes the highs sing through. And this is my down tuning guitar. This is the one I tune down uh, a whole step. Sometimes I'll tune it down even a step and a half. So that makes your low E a D or a C sharp. And so that uh, that's for doing like cocky type, type of uh, finger picking uh, instrumentals. 
Uh, it does have a pickup in, in it, which is just like a shaler. Uh, it comes out with a little sound hole jack here. Uh, all my guitars, all the acoustics do have pickups in them, but most of the time I use a piezoelectric that's the kind that you, like the key and keys that you just uh, putty inside the guitar so you can remove them if you needed to. Uh, the, uh, this particular Alvarez, this model of them, they made these with uh, Alpine spruce also. If you look at the spruce, and it's probably hard to tell here, this, there may not be enough resolution, but the grain on this is most definitely, uh, uh, it's, it's got a cross grain that's very pronounced as a lot of Alpine spruce does. And it's got some inlays uh, in the neck which are kind of cool. And uh, this one I was just banging away on a little bit, maybe out of tune. Yeah, it's out of tune. Uh, This is my this is my main baby that I play most of the time, and this would be uh, if I if, if I ever play out this is the main one that goes with me. Um, that is uh, pretty much one two three four five. That, that's the five twelve strings. So uh, thanks for watching. If uh, you have any questions, uh, do you want advice on picking a twelve string? If there's certain things that you look for in a twelve string, let me know what your opinions are. Uh, I like I like you know fast low action. Uh, deep resonance, lots of zing, balance. Uh, you tell me what you look for in a 12 string and maybe share what you, what kind of tools that you're playing and look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for watching. Please like, please subscribe, please share. I'm trying to get to a thousand uh, subscribers here in 2021. So thank you again for watching. Bye-bye.